So I'd say that those are the two primary things. The third thing I'd like to leave you with is, as we're all trying to figure out how we you know, play together and where we play together, there have been some very nice collaborative efforts on, uh, on, on some of Magnet's uh, uh, initiatives. One of them that we're very proud of is the, what we call the Innovation Accelerator. Dorothy was very involved, and all kidding aside, they provided a great forum for us to do that. And again, it's all centered around how we drive innovation into manufacturing. So, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing is not dark and uh, dungy. It is not thick and like. There is a lot of there is a lot of innovation and uh, process development going on in it. And working with uh, with Nortec, we were able to drive a bunch of innovation accelerators around the region to get people thinking about how they can drive innovation. So <coughs> I'll just lose my time. Thanks, that. Art. That's great. Tom Bradshaw, if you would reflect on Nortec, please. Sure. I'm going to talk a little bit about Nortec <coughs> Nortec's role and then uh, what Nortec has done, and then come back and talk about the reasons for optimism. Nortec is focused on building the local economy, the regional economy, uh, by acting as a strategic voice and catalyst for technology-based economic development. And I'm going to come back and talk about what I mean by a strategic voice and catalyst in a few minutes. So uh, technology-based economic development uh, is not the only way you can build a regional economy. You, you can obviously attract companies, build companies, uh, and, and uh, so the technology-based economic development is only one way to do that. Uh, Nortec has had some successes over the past years. For example, the creation of um, Jumpstart, uh, a wonderful organization. Some of my companies have uh, been a beneficiary of Jumpstart investments. The creation and support of TechLift, which is the entrepreneurial uh, group um, locally, the creation of bioenterprise, and the incubation and financial support for one community, which is the excellent um, uh, fiber optic broad-based um, uh, <coughs> network here locally for education, healthcare, government, and nonprofits. So um, that's a bit about what we've done in the past. What are we doing right now? Uh, there are three initiatives, uh, developing industries, Two industries of focus, energy, advanced and alternative energy. Secondly, uh, flexible displays. I'm going to come back and talk about advanced energy in a few minutes. Second initiative is commercializa commercialization of technology. And the third is government engagement in pu public policy to make sure that we're getting heard uh, both at the state level and at the uh, national level. So um, let's talk a little bit about ad advanced energy. Um, about a year and a half ago, it became obvious that there were opportunities for us to do something there. A very strong initiative in the state, also a need to do something at the, at the uh, national level. And uh, beyond that, uh, very strong research initiatives locally. So we have the Great Lakes Institute for Energy Innovation at CASE, for example, OSU's uh, Agricultural Research and Development Center, University of Akron, some wonderful algal oil developments there, for example, and also the CO2 sequestra sequestration, Cleveland State, and then the uh, University Clean Energy Initiative. All these uh, resources, coupled with the market opportunity, led us to say, let's put together a program to develop advanced and alternative energy here in Northeast Ohio. What we're doing is we're assembling an inventory Ted Theophrastus, with the sponsorship of Nortec, is doing an, an inventory of the assets we have in Northeast Ohio. And then we will develop a strategy to be submitted to the state uh, early next year. That will be rolled into the national effort for advanced and alternative energy, a catalyst and a strategic voice uh, for technology-based energy uh, here in Northeast Ohio. And why am I optimistic? I think um, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, we have recognition among those, like the people sitting on this podium, that something must be done. So that's, that's uh, I think, first. Secondly, we have the resources, the technology and money resources to do something. And third, we have the determination to, to do something as well. So uh, for those reasons, I, I am optimistic that we'll move forward, continue to build on the, the things we've been doing in the past. And just by way of, of uh, information, the technology uh, initiative has had some effects already. Rather than shrinking economy, 
the technology, the high-tech jobs have actually been growing over the last four years. So uh, I think the, the figures are about 2.7% increase per year for high-tech jobs over that period, whereas jobs total have gone down. So those are the reasons for my uh, optimism, Dorothy. Thank you, Tom. Team Neo, Don Mischief. Is it okay if I still drink at lunch? <laughs> <laughs> no, let me describe Team Neo, and when I describe it, it's a big reason for my optimism. Team Neo is for the attraction of new business to our region. And when you look at what's taking a place at Team Neo, it is the first time we've ever really had a focus. And when I look at the teaming taking place, I, I consider myself a little bit of a poster child. I was born and raised in Canton. I live on the north side of Akron. I work in Cleveland. I live the region. And the meetings you go to, there's total cooperation from everybody. There's total effort. There's total consistency about what we're all about. When you look at what Team NEO is doing, they're having over 90 contacts and leads annually already with opportunities to bring businesses to Northeast Ohio. Also, when you look at it, there's seven new biomedical companies in Northeastern Ohio in the last two years. I'd also say a big reason I'm so opti uh, optimistic about it, we have the finest staff we've ever had focused on this. This Cleveland Plus campaign is for real. Uh, the, the, the brand that's being created outside the country, uh, I'll give you, you know, why it may be optimism, our biggest challenge is us. Our attitude about who we are and how negative we can be about ourselves is the thing we have to change in the room that, you know, it's all about us. And the Cleveland Plus campaign is huge about that. I look at my office and my younger people, when you show them the videos on Cleveland uh, Plus, they light up. So when you look at what's going on and some of the trends around here, just the fact we finally have an organization like Team Neo that is operational, they're out there touching the world, and they're creating a brand for us outside of Northeastern Ohio, far better than we think of ourselves. And I'll keep going back to that. The biggest challenge, and when we look at our funding of the Cleveland Plus campaign, there's three pillars in it. It's the attraction of business and creating our brand outside. It's helping in tourism. And it's changing our own attitude. That's probably going to take the most money. And that's what frightens me. But when you look at the optimism and you look at some of the trends around, don't forget, we still are one of the major corporate headquarters in the United States. When our firm measure it, measure, we measure it as the seventh largest corporate headquarters uh, population in the United States, and I think on a per capita basis, we're third. So when things start changing, these companies are still here. You just read about the negative all day. And when you look at some of the trends, well, I didn't like seeing Eaton pull out of downtown itself. Eaton didn't leave. Eaton sitting out in Beachwood. They're still a major contributor to the region. Look at what Goodyear's doing down in Akron with the new facilities that are going to go into Akron. Even my own firm. We're trying to do an East Bank of the Flats, new headquarters for us. We'll put 1,200 people there as a part of a Wolstein redevelopment project where people can live, work, and play. There's the warehouse district. There's a couple things booming down there, the Med Mart, all these different things. We have one of the finest, if not the finest, health care network in the world. And there's your optimism. It's just all about us starting to take a good look at ourselves. So when you start looking outside your barriers and look to the region more, and we have three Hall of Fames right here in our backyard. We have one of the finest golf tournaments in the world sitting down in Akron, the Bridgestone Invitational. Those type of things, you start the National Park, second or third most visited national park in the United States, uh, the Chicago Valley National Park. That's where the optimism is. So the tremendous things going on, I'd say Team NEO in itself, its existence and the fact the way it's operating today and its leadership gives me good, uh, very good optimism. Thanks, Don.